loads of stuff went on behind the scenes, which I'm not going to talk about. Loads of nasty stuff went mm. on behind the clo closed doors. Hey, Large Kofi here. And in my last video, I discussed the history and rise of Gymshark and detailed how they became the biggest athleisure brand in the world, worth over $1 billion. I spoke extensively on co-founder and CEO of Gymshark, Ben Francis, who's had significant influence on the company and has always been synonymously associated with Gymshark. Who I didn't speak much about was Lewis Morgan, the other co-founder of Gymshark who's been slowly and systematically erased from the history of the company, and in today's video, I'll be talking about why. But before we can get to the why, we have to talk about Lewis Morgan and his part in building the athleisure company that took over the fitness industry. Lewis Morgan grew up in Bromsgrove, Worcestershire, England, the same town that Ben Francis is from. In fact, Lewis and Ben have known each other since middle school, and they had always seen each other around, but they didn't become best friends until later. This was because early on, Ben and Lewis had different interests, as well as different friend groups, until Ben had developed an interest in working out in high school. So naturally, he turned to a familiar face to guide him on his fitness journey, and that person was Lewis. Lewis showed Ben proper technique and taught him the fundamentals of nutrition as well. They also took some IT classes together where Lewis noticed Ben's talent for web development. It was through fitness and tech that they would bond and grow their friendship. Now, Lewis describes himself as a C student in high school. His grades weren't that great. Not because he wasn't smart, but because he didn't apply himself as much as he should have. He was more interested in being a class clown and making people laugh than academia. This was until he realized that his lack of effort was actually hurting his chances at getting into the college that he wanted. I was a class clown, there's no two ways about it. I'd go into school thinking I was cool, trying to make people laugh, and I'd get kicked out of lessons because I'm interrupting another, you know, 30 people's um, uh, education. See, while all of his friends were on their way to their dream schools, Lewis was a bit behind in that endeavor, so his senior year, he got it in full gear and was subsequently accepted into the Worcester State University. Like his best friend at the time, he decided to study business because of his desire to go into the field someday. This decision would be the catalyst for him and Ben starting Gymshark. See, they both had a passion for fitness and they were both studying business at university, so they would naturally gravitate toward each other in the process and try to figure out a way to make money online. And this thought is what kickstarted Gymshark. At the time that he was building Gymshark with Ben, Lewis was working two jobs, one as a pot washer at a restaurant and another as a retail assistant at British streetwear brand Burton, all while still going to school and trying to keep his grades up, an experience which he describes as mayhem. Now, one thing that Gymshark had at the time was a massive Facebook following, and they leveraged that following to sell their new clothing line to their already loyal customer base that was buying their supplements. And Lewis's impressive physique was what helped them grow that large customer base on Facebook, not to mention the large emphasis they placed on designing clothing that accentuated the male physique. In 2013, they launched another clothing brand with their longtime friend, Reese Robara, called Manuel de Voix, MDV for short. Manuel de Voix translates to the way to see in French, and the clothing brand is what I would call streetwear meets athleisure. In the early days, they even shipped and managed MDV orders from the same warehouse as the Gymshark ones, and used the Gymshark infrastructure to propel and push MDV. Now, according to Lewis, at this time, their friend group got very small because while everyone was partying, hooking up, and having the college experience, they were spending all their time growing their business. As a matter of fact, Lewis was skipping exams and other coursework to focus on Gymshark. He knew his time was better spent there because once the company went from supplements to clothing, he saw the potential and did what most successful business owners do. He went all in which was a decision that was extremely lucrative because Gymshark went from being valued at $108,000 in 2013, the year the company broke out, to $3.4 million at the time that Lewis left, which was 2016. Speaking of the time Lewis left, let's talk about that. See, once Gymshark took off, Ben and Lewis went on an Expo World Tour to market the company all across the world and build Gymshark's brand awareness. However, at some point, things started to sour because Lewis left his position as a director in the company. There's a bit of contention as to when Lewis left the company because according to Ben, Lewis left around 2014, maybe 2015. I know, I know when Lewis left in 2014, 2015, the, the, the six months after that was difficult. But according to Lewis, he left in 2016. I'm not having Ben going on people's podcasts telling people that I left in 2014 because it's not true. I left as a director in October 2016. This may seem insignificant, but one or two years of building a fast growing company is not only an incredible amount of work, but a difference of $1.9 million worth of growth, in the case of Gymshark. That's a lot of growth for a company that was only four years old as of 2016, and I'm inclined to believe that Lewis played a pretty important role in that growth. After all, he did own about 20% of the company at the time that he left. 
But here's the thing, when you watch a lot of Ben's interviews and other Gymshark content which detail its history, Lewis is only mentioned when he absolutely needs to be, otherwise he's been treated as somewhat of an afterthought in the company's growth. When Ben Francis talks about the origins of Gymshark, he says a lot of I's and not many we's when we know that Lewis was around. In fact, the fitness app that Ben says he created, Fat Loss Guide, Lewis claims to have actually helped build. Yeah. And that's when we started to build an app together. Mm -hmm. He built the app, I did all the content, so I was like really shredded. Yeah. Uh, it's called Fat Loss App Guide and we got like, I don't know, top five in, in the UK. I made four iPhone apps, two of which were fitness apps, and both of them made it into the top charts in the UK and several other countries. Now, in terms of painting the picture for Lewis's official departure, it looks a little something like this. Ben Francis does an interview with Diary of a CEO and alludes to some potential issues with roles as the business was growing. Because that's, that's what you need, right? You need clear roles and responsibilities. Um, and listen, regardless, if you don't have that, it just, it just muddies the water, doesn't it? This makes sense considering they were 19 when Gymshark took off and became millionaires in what probably felt like overnight. And with the company growing faster than they could handle, and more people getting involved, issues with roles were basically inevitable. Lewis Morgan then alludes to the idea that there were unfulfilled promises and immoral business practices going on behind the scenes, specifically when it comes to agreements being made. It was handshake agreements until things started getting put in place and within seven months I was gone. Do you know what I mean? Hmm. And then he goes on to advise aspiring business owners to have everything in black and white before they go into business to avoid future conflict. Yeah, so two reasons. So my point is, even though you've had bad experience or hurt or whatever you want to call it, you've still seen the value in working with people. So what would your advice be? There's two sides to the story because you can put contracts in place, but then it all depends on who you're working with. If the people are always out to get you, then they're going to get you no matter what the contract says. The best, as you just mentioned, the best mm. thing for anyone to do is have everything black and white before you start. Because as soon as you start to make money, pe things change and people think they're entitled to something else that they have already agreed to. Hmm. Then he goes on to make the most interesting statement I think he's ever made regarding why he left Gymshark as a director. And that's that he may not have wanted to. How come you left at such a, a poignant moment? Obviously, it's a, it's a hard situation for me to talk about because of the legalities as well behind it. But it wasn't intentional for me to just get up and leave my company that I just started. Do you know what I mean? Why would I? I mean, yeah. we're about to make loads of money. Why am I just going to leave? Do you know what I mean? Huh. Are you starting to see the picture now? We'll never get the full story of why Lewis left Gymshark specifically due to legal reasons, but we know for sure that there was enough turmoil behind the scenes to get him to resign from his role. Look, there's a lot of skeletons in the closet that are probably never going to be spoke about because of contractual reasons. Mm. Um, the same year he took a step back was the same year he founded the Ernest Cole Property Group, his real estate group which focuses on the convergence of old factories into new and fun e-commerce office hubs, as well as new built homes, according to Lewis's LinkedIn. In August of 2020, when General Atlantic bought a 21% stake in Gymshark, Ben called Lewis to talk to him about the deal and figure out next steps, and Lewis decided at that time that he was ready to move on from Gymshark entirely, and he sold all of his shares for a reported 100 million pounds. This marked the official beginning of Lewis's next chapter. After leaving Gymshark with over 100 M's in his bank account, Lewis could have retired if he wanted to, but that was not the route for him, because being a consummate businessman, he was hungry to continue the entrepreneurial grind, because according to Lewis, I've always had the drive to continue to keep doing things. I mean, I don't believe that anyone should just retire. I think it's, it's not good for the mind. Lately, he's been focusing on helping Reese grow MDV, which Ben was bought out of. He remains a silent partner while allowing Reese to run the day to day. In 2021, he also became an executive chairman of the Able Group and is now behind the growth of one of UK's fastest growing women's athleisure brands, Be Able. He joined brothers Reese and Christian Edgerton in an effort to try to push the Be Able brand to the top of the athleisure scene. And according to Lewis, they're coming for Gymshark's head. So that's your aim? to be the main competitor to Gymshark? Not within, within Able, we're going to be bigger. Yep. It's going to be one of the biggest activewear companies in the world. It already is. It's growing faster than Gymshark. Within four years, we're, turning over, we're going to turn over 20 million this year. We're growing unbelievably quick. Now, another thing he's been focusing more on is his family. One of his motivations for continuing to grind after resigning from Gymshark was his desire to ensure that his family would be provided for for life, something which I'm sure he's already accomplished. 
He also recently welcomed a baby girl with his wife. Ultimately, for Lewis, it hasn't always been about the money. If it was, he'd be sitting on an island somewhere enjoying an early retirement. But he's a true businessman and truly loves every aspect of it, something which he also showcases on his podcast called the Lewis Morgan Podcast, where he sits down and talks business with the people behind some of the most successful companies out there. You can catch the pod on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. Go give it a listen. If you like this video, consider giving it a like. If you want to see more content like this, consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell so you know when I drop my next video. When you think of Gymshark, you think of Brent Francis, and rightfully so, he's been spearheading the company for years now. But when we look at the history of Gymshark, you definitely cannot forget about Lewis Morgan. I'm Large Kofi. Thank you for watching.